and allowing other people to come in. This class basically is a movement class that teaches you to pay attention to your body. And I use three different things to do that. I'm giving you a cue or like a certain technique to do. Like I need you to roll your hips. So it allows you to pay attention to that. The second thing that I do is I'll either give you a visual, like expanding or deflating, peeling, melting, something to put a visual to the move that you're doing. And then the third thing, because I'm very specific on how I want things to be done, usually if I say you should be feeling glutes or you should feel abs at the end of the exhale, you should feel those things for the most part. So it also gives you another thing to pay attention to. And I find that it's very helpful to use movement as a way to be present. I found a lot of benefit myself with meditating, but I can also understand why it's really hard for people to meditate because, especially if they're really stressed out. So adding movement to something to allow yourself to pay attention can feel pretty good. So anytime you feel distracted towards the class, always bring it back to whatever cue that we're doing. Nothing should really hurt. Things should feel maybe intense and uncomfortable, but nothing should feel pinchy or nothing should hurt. So if it does, wave me down and I'll unmute you. If it's something that kind of bothers you a little bit, but you can work through it, let me know at the end and we can coach you. I can coach you out of it and give you a modification for next time. But we go through, I show you like two to three different moves and we go through that a few times and a few rounds. And I use a lot of breathing. So if you have any questions, just let me know. If you have any questions at the end about coaching, cueing, any of this, let me know. Um, a big thing for me on this is these cues and these moves, not always, but a lot of the times, are the same moves that I want someone to recreate on the training floor. So if I can get them competent in this, in the scenario, or in the, a place where they can actually pay attention to the cues, I feel like they'll be a lot better on the training floor. Um, once I open my gym back up, I'll let you know how that goes. Because uh, <laughs> I, I started these classes right when we shut down. And since then, I'd only done a few, I'd done like 10 privates with clients, but I never did it in a group setting and had someone consistently do it. So that's the little intro for the class. So you're going to start by laying on your back. So the class is to pay attention. So I always like to start with paying attention to your regular breathing. So see if you can follow your breathing from your inhale all the way to your exhale. And just like meditating, getting distracted is not ruining your meditation or hearing someone or having your dog jump on you or your cat disrupt you. Getting distracted with your thoughts is not something that ruins your meditation. It's totally normal. It's being able to let go of it. And that's what I like the movement perspective because you can just pay attention to your movement every time you get distracted. Now I want you to bring your attention to where you feel your breath. So just your regular breath. When you breathe in, where do you feel it in your body fill up with air? And just see if you can hold your attention in that area. It might be your belly, your chest, your sides.
Now I want you to start exaggerating your breaths in. So take a big breath in through your nose and then just relax as you exhale. And just notice how much easier it is to pay attention of where you're feeling your breath. So just give me a few of those, exaggerate your breaths in. And take a break from that. Now I want you to practice your full exhales. So we do this a lot throughout the whole entire practice. It's a full exhale through your mouth. So everybody is muted, but I should be able to hear you if you weren't. It's breath in through your nose, and then full breath out through your mouth, like you're fogging up a big glass window. And the goal is about eight to 12 second exhales. So I want you to count in your head how long you're able to get an exhale to be. And just regular breath in through your nose and then back to fully exhaling. And see if you can get each exhale to be a little longer than the one before. Perfect. So you're going to start with your first move. You'll stay there on the ground. Bend your knees and put your feet on the, on the floor. And then you're going to start with the reach. So you're going to breathe in through your nose. And then full exhale through your mouth. Think of being pulled by your fingertips. So your shoulders come off the ground. And then keep your head relaxed. And you'll stay there the whole time. So in through the nose. Full breath out as you reach up towards the ceiling. So allow your shoulders to come off the ground. You're being pulled by your fingertips. So don't let the shoulders drop. Allow them to come off the ground. You're reaching up towards the ceiling. Perfect. And each exhale, you reach a little more. So you're still fully exhaling through your mouth. What you should feel is a little bit of abs. Each time you reach, you should feel more abs. And take a break. And now you're gonna move down to your hips. You're gonna untuck and tuck. And this is the one where I tell people to do what feels good. Cause some people, it hurts them to arch their back. So just don't arch that much. So what you'll do is you'll go from tucking to untucking. So you're gonna untuck your hips, your low back should slightly come off the ground, but think of a relax coming off, so you shouldn't feel your low back. And then you're gonna roll the hips the opposite direction, which pushes your low back into the ground. And then untuck, go nice and slow. And you're just paying attention to rolling your hips back and forth. And go from untucking to tucking your hips. And I encourage people to close their eyes and just really pay attention to the move that you're doing, which is rolling your hips. Your low back goes off the ground and then it comes back onto the ground, rolling, tucking your hips. And continue to roll your hips up and down to start pushing into your feet a little bit. So now you're paying attention to your feet and you're paying attention to the rock. 
The untuck is when your low back comes off the ground, and then the tuck is when your back goes onto the ground. You kind of go into a little bit of a glute bridge. And rest. Now you're gonna do the same move, but on all fours. So I call it a less exaggerated cat-cow. So you'll get on your elbows and your knees. And notice what I do with my chest here. So this is me dropping my chest down. I'm going to push straight up without hunching over. So allow yourself to drop first and push yourself away from the ground and stay there. And then the move is through the hips. You're gonna exhale as you untuck your hips. Inhale, think of the back pockets getting pulled down towards your knees. And then your upper body shouldn't move. Exhale, back pockets get pulled up. Inhale, back pockets get pulled down. And it's the same move you're doing on the ground, but just in a different position. And then exhale, back pockets get pulled up. Inhale, back pockets get pulled down. And then the breathing's the same, in through your nose, out through your mouth. And move as much as it feels good, as long as it feels good. And as you inhale, the back pockets get pulled down towards your knees. And Molly, get your elbows back a little bit. Perfect, that's good. And Becca, shift the weight forward a little bit. And rest. You're gonna go back on your back, back to the reaching. So if I'm laying on my back right now, I'm reaching up. So allow your shoulders to come off the ground, straight up towards the ceiling, keeping your head relaxed. And that's what should get you abs. So it's in through the nose, full breath out. Picture your whole chest deflating and your whole body deflating as your arms get pulled up. I think each exhale you're being pulled by your fingertips. Keep reaching and keep exhaling. Keep your arms up in the air. As you fully exhale, you should feel your low back kind of hit the ground. Keep it there as you breathe in. And the more you reach, the more abs you should feel. And rest. And you're gonna go back to tucking, but this time you're not going to untuck. You're just tucking into a bridge. So you're lay on your back and not picking up your hips like a regular bridge. You're rolling your hips and you continue to roll, continue to roll, and you continue to roll until your hips are off the ground. You should feel a lot of glutes and a lot of hamstrings. Hold for a second and then relax, start all over. You're thinking of peeling your hips one vertebrae at a time as you roll your hips, hold it for about five seconds, and then relax. So kind of go at your own pace. You're peeling your hips off the ground slowly. And then hold for about five seconds. And the five seconds that you're holding, you're really pushing into your feet. Try to slow it down a little bit, especially the move. Make sure your knees are straight ahead, so don't let them drive out. Pretend there's a ball between them. And that should give you a little bit of inner thighs. It's gonna prevent you from coming up as high. That's okay. And 
And rest. You're gonna go back to all fours on your elbows. So you start out by relaxing your upper body and then push your upper body away by using your elbows pushing into the ground. And then the breathing is inhale, back pockets get pulled down towards your knees. Exhale, back pockets get pulled up. And go as slow as you're breathing. So you should still be exhaling for about 10 seconds. And if you get distracted, you just go back to the back pockets. They're either getting pulled down or they're getting pulled up. And it's all driven by the back pockets. See if you can pull them down even more. That looks good. And rest. Now you're gonna go back to the reaching and you're gonna use your feet to help your low back hit the ground. So give me a little bit of a roll, just enough for your low back to hit the ground and you're pushing down into your feet and then take the hands in through the nose. Full breath out as you reach up towards the ceiling and hold. There's a lot to pay attention to. You're reaching up towards the ceiling. You're fully exhaling. You're pushing into your feet. Like each exhale, you reach a little more. Your head's relaxed, your feet are pushing into the ground. Keep reaching a little more and relax. So if you're happy for that to be over, then that's when you know you've done it right. <laughs> and now you're gonna go back into the bridge. This time, hold it for about 20 seconds. You're gonna roll your hips slowly. Continue to roll, you're peeling them off the ground and then hold for about 20 seconds. And notice the distribution of weight between each foot. Try to make it even and then slowly relax on the way down. So one vertebra at a time, you're peeling, your knees are straight ahead. And then you're holding. And when you're holding, what you're thinking of is because you're pushing into your feet, that's how you're able to hold your hips in that position. And that's what lifting weights is, is using your feet to push into the ground. And rest and go back to all fours. And this time give even more motion through your hips to where it's pulling your spine as well. So you're pulling down and then you continue to pull and it starts to pull the rest of your body. And then exhale, let the rest of your body relax. So your whole body is moving, but it's all being driven by the back of your hips. So whenever you're ready, Inhale, the back pockets get pulled down and you just continue to pull them until the rest of your body gets pulled with it. And then exhale, let the whole body relax.
and rest. Now you're gonna go back to your back. So we do this one a lot. It's working on the full exhale with a pause. So I'll explain it before you go. You're gonna be laying on your back and you're gonna practice fully exhaling because if you get all the air out, like squeeze all the air out, you should feel some tension in your abs. And I want you to hold that for five seconds. And at the end of the five seconds, just relax and breathe back in. And that's all you're doing is practicing. So it looks like this. You're laying on your back. You're exhaling, 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 exhaling. And then hold for five seconds and literally tell yourself in your head, holding on to the tension. And at the end of the five seconds, let go of that tension and you should just automatically breathe back in. And then so just continue to do that. So lay on your back, in through the nose, full breath out through your mouth, all the way out until it gets uncomfortable. Hold for five seconds and then just relax. Oh, good question. So I just had a question. Um, when you inhale, do you let go of the tension and maintain a posterior tilt? So for this, don't worry about your hips at all. So just let your hips be, feet be. You're only focusing on that full breath out. And it should feel pretty uncomfortable. And if you don't feel that tension, exhale even more. Don't brace. Allow the abs to turn on because you're exhaling fully. And you're holding for five seconds and then you just completely let go. See if you can get each exhale to be a little longer. And just notice how superficial the breath in is as you relax. How you feel it in the front of your chest. And rest. Now we're going into the rock back lat stretch. So you'll push your hips back towards your heels. If this is uncomfortable, you can also do it in the all fours position. So just modify if you need to. You're gonna start with the left arm down and reaching the right arm across. So you're getting a nice stretch from your right shoulder all the way to your right side of the, your hip. And when you breathe in, I want you to big, big breath in, and I want you to fill up the right side of your body. So everybody looks good. Yes. So as you breathe in, think of filling up the right side of your body and notice where you feel tight and where is it restricted. So this one's the one that can be pretty intense. I just don't want it to be so intense that it's hurting. But the breathing stays the same, in through the nose, Full breath out through your mouth. And stretch the right side of your body with air. And now right arm down, left arm across. Same thing, big breath in, stretch the left side of your body. And rest. So now we're going to quadruped rock back. You're gonna get on all fours and then take your hands forward slightly. You're always pushing, so your arms are never relaxing. So you're always pushing away from the ground, even when you're pushing back. 
So the breathing is inhale as you push your hips back. Exhale, you're still being pushed away from the ground as you rock back towards your hands. Inhale, rock back, exhale. Inhale, rock back. Whenever you're ready. But you're always pushing away and then go on your elbows. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> that was a modification. <laughs> uh, yeah, stay on your hands. Awesome, Bridget. Yep, keep that reach. So your chest is always being pushed away from the ground. You might feel a stretch in the upper back or mid back as you rock back. And rest. Now flip back over, back to the exhaling. The full breath out. Hold for five seconds. And then relax as you breathe in. And then arms just next to you, or whenever, however you want your arms, and you're just working on the full breath out. And just notice your whole body deflating. And getting every inch of air out. And in your head, go from holding on to the tension and letting it go. And you want to differentiate between the two of holding on to the tension you create at the end of the exhale and then just letting it go. Here's And rest. Back to the lat stretch. With the lat stretch, make sure your hand doesn't go way beyond the left side of your body. So you're almost getting in front of it. So this time you're in the rock back position. Think of exhaling, you're deflating the left side of your body, inflating the right. Because if you go too far across, you might cramp on the left side. And then Alexander, bring your left elbow down towards your knee. Perfect. So as you're fully exhaling, you are exhaling the left side of your body. And then inflating the right. And see if you can, on one inhale, fill up from your left sh right shoulder all the way to your right hip on one inhale. And switch to the other side. Now you're going to deflate the right side of your body and fill up the left. See if you can get in one inhale expansion from your left shoulder all the way to your left hip. And relax. Now you're gonna go back to the all fours rock back. Start out by going on all fours. And before you start, push away from the ground and keep the push the whole entire time. You'll inhale, reach back, 
Exhale, you're still being pushed away from the ground as you reach over to your hands. So right there, Madison, pause. Push away from the ground, so push up with your arms. Yes, that's better. And a little more tuck to your hips. Perfect. Now, Alexander, get your hands forward a little bit. Good. And rest. Now you're going to go back to your back for the last round of exhaling. But what I want is for you to hold on to the tension as you breathe in. So feel restricted and I'll feel uncomfortable. So instead of letting go, you hold on to that tension and you breathe underneath the tension. So the breath in should feel a lot deeper. And then you full breath out again. And then if, take a break like every five breaths. So breath in through your nose, full breath out through your mouth, hold on to the tension as you breathe in, and then full breath out again. Another way to think about it is keeping your low back on the ground as you take a breath in. You're breathing underneath the tension, so it should feel much deeper. And it should feel like you're not getting enough air in because you're breathing into areas that are restricted, and that's normal. The more you practice this, the less it should feel um, uncomfortable. Good. And take a break. Last lat stretch. Right side first, so left arm down. Reach the right arm across and see if it's any different from the first time you did it. Does it feel less stiff as you breathe in? And switch to the other side. Right arm down, left arm across, and you're filling up the left side of your body. And notice, is it any different from the first time? And rest. One more rock back on all fours. So back to all fours. Give me a nice little reach, chest up towards the ceiling. Exhale as you go towards your hands, and then inhale as you push your hips back. Tuck your hips a little bit on the way back. Perfect, and rest. So now, unless you start feeling it in your low back, you'll keep your 
feet on the ground, but I think most of you should be able to do it. The same breathing that you were just practicing, you're gonna have an ISO hold. So hips and knees will be about 90 degrees. So it gets easier if I go closer to my chest. It gets harder if I'm here. As long as you can keep that same position you just worked on on the exhaling. So bring your legs up, arms to your side, in through the nose, full breath out. So you should feel a ton of abs. So find that spot that's challenging where you're feeling abs, but you're not feeling your low back. And just keep your low back on the ground, keep that position and just continue to breathe. And just find that spot that's challenging you, but you're still able to breathe and you're feeling it in your abs. That same position you're finding right now is the same position I want you to find in your squat, which is next. So now you're going to stand and we're just holding the top position of the squat. So since we're not squatting up and down, I like a very narrow stance. So feet straight ahead, about hip width apart. And what you're going to do is you're going to soften your knees and then pull the back pockets down and hold. So it's the same move you've been practicing. Pulling the back pockets down so your hips should be underneath you now. You squat a little bit and just hold. In through the nose, full breath out. And work with what you have. Awesome, Bridget. Pull the back pockets down a little more. More. Yes, perfect. And really think of pushing into your feet. Because you're pushing into your feet, that's how you're able to hold yourself there. And relax. Back to your back, laying on your back with the ISO hold. Find that spot that's challenging, and then just full breath out as your low back goes into the ground. And if you get tired, you can bring your legs down and reset. And I want it to be challenging. I just don't want you to not stop feeling your abs and start feeling other things. And rest. See if you can find that same position with your squat, because it's basically the same thing. I'm laying on my back with my legs in that position. So soften your knees, pull the back pockets down more than what you think, and then reach the arms down and hold. Looks good. Much better, Calvin. And you're feeling your back pockets getting pulled down, your feet pushing into the ground. And to stand up, push into the ground as you stand back up. Perfect. Back to the dead bug laying on your back. No matter how good of shape you are in, the squat's always hard, no matter, <laughs> especially when you tuck. So go ahead, find that spot that's challenging. Yes. And then full breath out, low back into the ground as you fully exhale. And rest. One more squat. So set up, feet straight ahead, 
And then even put your own hands on your back pockets and just pull them down. So your back pockets are here, pull the back pockets down, and then just squat down a little bit. Don't allow yourself to hit back. Nice, right there, perfect. And keep pulling them down. Think because you're pushing into your feet, that's how you're able to hold yourself in that position. And push into your feet as you stand back up. Awesome, and back on your back. And we always end with what we started with. So, yep, you're done with dead bugs. I want you to go back to your regular breathing, back to just paying attention to just your regular breathing in and out through your nose. To find a comfortable spot. Whenever you're ready, start moving around. Nice job, guys. How was that? Yeah, you all did great. Amazing. I feel like I can breathe way more into my sides now. I always felt that like hardcore in my belly and then my chest, especially on like a forceful inhale. I never like air going into my sides. Nice. That's awesome. That's really cool. 
What about you, Bridget? Your first one. Um, that was more challenging than I thought it would be. It was really cool. I did. I struggled with the getting breath in my sides. Um, that was. I felt everything else except for that one. So I look forward to getting to where Calvin's at. I I struggled with that one. Yeah, everything else looked good. Uh, squats challenging. Uh, oh. <laughs> especially with the back pocket tuck. Yeah, yeah. It looked good. What about you, Molly? Um, yeah, I've been, I've been doing some of this stuff with Katie St. Clair for a little while, but I've noticed that I think I breathe with my lats. Like when you were talking about feeling your abs, I would feel my lats. And so then I had to, I, I could get to the point where I would feel abs, but I had to be super mindful about it. Like telling my lats to chill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, making sure that you don't go too fast. Yeah. Are, are you like feeling this kind of tighten up? Um, well, yeah, I kind of feel it on both the inhale and exhale. When I inhale, I feel like a lot of posterior expansion, but I, I really feel my lats. And then on the exhale, when I'm trying to get all the air out at that very end, and I'm, you know, trying to get that ab contraction, I just feel my lats tight. So yeah, I mean, when I, when I would like talk myself through it, I had to go much slower and like softer. Um, a lot softer exhale, and that helped, but it still required a lot of, like, thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you'll run into that with people who train, um, but I don't know how many times I have to say, awesome, go slower. Yeah. <laughs> slower. That was really good. Can you go slower than that? And I, I have to say the same thing, like, 20 times. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it looked good. Um, what about Marie? First time. Yes, thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this guy has me doing a lot of the tucking and the breathing. It's Robert. Um, and uh, breathing under the tension was really hard. Like, feeling the tension and then trying to take a breath into it, that was really challenging. And I had to take breaths, uh, breaks in between. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, um, it definitely is. And then if you're really restricted, because the, the idea is you, we, we need to get you to expand 360. And when people are able to do that the best, they're able to move a lot better. And that's just like a consistent thing that we notice. So when we restrict with the tension, we end up breathing in the areas that are really tight. So if we take away your way of breathing, which is this way, and we take that away, and now you have to breathe into areas that are really restricted, it's gonna be really hard. So it is uncomfortable. Laying on your back also makes it even harder, just because you're now sitting on a flat, or laying on a flat surface, and you can't expand back. But it is the easiest way to coach it, just because you're laying flat. So if it is getting to the point where it's like really uncomfortable, because it should be a little uncomfortable, uh, too much, a few things that you can do, or if anyone has clients, adding a pillow can help. Just because if you add, if I'm laying on a flat surface and you add a pillow, it does open up a little bit on my upper back. So I do have some expansion there. If it's still too miserable, like you feel like you can't get any air, like, like this, seated helps a ton. So just seated position, full breath out. Because now you've opened up the whole entire backside of your body to have more uh, room for expansion. So if it's a little uncomfortable, I'm good. But if it's like way too uncomfortable, adding a pillow or just changing the position uh, can help. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions or comments or complaints? I have a question on the lat stretch. Yeah. Um, it seemed like I could get way more air on my right side, but the left side felt super restrictive. Um, do you have like any type of thoughts on why that might be? Um, the most accurate thought is no, I don't know. Cool, thank you. <laughs> you never know. Um, and then it's, I used to be like, oh yeah, because of the asymmetries in the body and this is why. Yeah, yeah 
the body is very asymmetrical. And the way I would answer that for a client is like, oh, that's normal. You're going to feel things differently on one side of the body and then the other, um, just because you are asymmetrical. Right. But that would be the only thing. Um, when it comes to like exercises and people feel the difference, like let's say a step up and their the right side feels way less unstable or, or feels more unstable, that's when I use assistance and allow them to like just distribute the weight differently so it feels even. Um, that would be the only time they're like, I address the asymmetry is if right. one side just doesn't feel right, I use assistance to have them shift their weight accordingly so it feels even. But I try not to get to the point where it's like, oh, yeah, it's this muscle that might be more tight because then that does get in people's heads um, talking about your asymmetries. So, but yeah, totally normal as long as it's not causing a problem. Cool. Mm -hmm. Good question. Any other questions? Um, yes. Well, maybe comments. Um, so this was, I don't know how many I've done now, how long you've been doing this, but this was the hardest actually by far. Um, and I think it's the weather. We have a storm. So like I came into it, like my body was just kind of tight and tense. Um, but the squats that I can't do, <laughs> um, I think like I guess the way the body works, I think it could act, it's probably more my knees and my ankles than my hips that are preventing me from, if that makes sense. Yeah, if that's where you're feeling it. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, and then we talked a little bit about this autumn, and I had another person in the morning class having some knee pain. Uh, my question is, how often are you doing this type of squat? Is it just on Sundays with me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> not, not often enough. No, I did do it. I did try it this week um, in warm-ups with my heels elevated. Because um, I, what I like to tell people is, if you're only doing it on Tuesdays with me or only on Thursdays, then every time you do it, your body's like, whoa, what is this? And then that, because your body usually starts to create pain before there's anything to worry about. But if it's every time it's new, it's like, whoa, what's this new thing? So what your body needs is a little more consistency to adapt to the, the positions that you're trying to put it in. So that can look just like five to 10 breaths twice a day, every day, and that might be enough. Um, so if, if there's something that is just, it's not, I've tried to cue you out of it because it looks good, or I would say something. But if it just continues to cause you problems, that's when I'm asking them, okay, well, how often are we doing this move outside of the gym? Like your body needs some, some time to adapt. Um, if you're my mom, I just tell you, just keep doing it. Eventually, <laughs> um, that, that's, that's the first thing I would try to do is do a few more squats throughout the day and throughout the week to get your body to adapt to the, the physical demands that you're trying to put it on. You see, your question? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucy, who taught you these breathing techniques or where did you learn these breathing techniques? Um I would say a com I mean a combination of PRI is what got me introduced to breathing, the Postural Restoration Institute, but then all the people at iFast, do you know where that is? The the gym in India? I do that. I fast. Um, they, they were basically the pioneers of all the breathing and position stuff. Um, and then Bill Hartman is a physical therapist. And then Zach Couples, who also is a physical therapist, he's the one that influenced me the most. Okay. Super cool. Um, but if you have never learned it, I would not start with Zach. <laughs> I, <laughs> I would start with me. <laughs> So me and people like Katie and Michelle like are really good with hope, teaching trainers how to see all these moves and all the breathing exercises. And then Zach teaches you to understand the why. Mm -hmm. More physiology stuff. Yeah, and understanding the like the anatomy side of it. I teach you the cues and the visuals and the feelings. Like you should feel this, you should, the client should feel that. And then I, you would go to Zach. So this class on Sundays is probably a perfect Perfect place to start. Perfect. Yeah, because if you start with Zach, it'll just go over your head. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. 
question. Any other questions? Cool. Well, I'm not opening my gym, so I'll continue to do these. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much. You're welcome. My pleasure. Bye. Thanks for inviting me, Alexander. <laughs> Bye, Kevin.